Welcome to Real Physics. This is another little clip of my series Superhuman Artificial Intelligence Benchmarks. And today I'll talk about the proton electron mass ratio, which is a mysterious number as the fine structure constant is I talked about in my last video. And you might even suspect is this number somehow related to the fine structure constant. So the thing you could do is find whatever mathematical formula going to the list of mathematical constants and find some number that that relates the fine structure constant to the electron proton mass ratio. That would be, of course, stunning, but maybe a little bit less if you don't have calculated the fine structure constant before. And of course, you can try to calculate this mass ratio directly, but I don't think it will be done in isolation from this other very important number. And well, a couple of historical remarks. There was Einstein in 1930 who said, who had a dream of a unified theory, but remarked in the end, I hope this equation will lead to the calculation of the electron and the proton masses. And of course, there was Paul Dirac who pondered a big part of his life about this number. Also, his great achievement of the Dirac equation of the of the Dirac C of electrons, which later were interpreted as positrons. But originally, it, this was motivated by explaining proton and electron because it's so incredible, mysterious. Why is this 1836.15 and not 2000 and not 300 and whatever number? I mean, all the world, all the universe would work pretty much the same if this number had another value. So it's really one of the great big mysteries of physics. And I should add here, while the fine structure constant is related to the unification of electrodynamics and quantum physics, which we don't have yet, there is another aspect of this number because if you calculate, if you're able to calculate the proton mass or the mass ratio to the electron, you have really understood something of nuclear physics. What's the essence of this? I wouldn't call it interaction, but the, the, the mass of the particles, which you cannot calculate from just electromagnetism in this case. And I would like to remind you from a quote of Niels Bohr, one of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics, who noted that he thinks that for properly understanding nuclear physics, a similar revolution than quantum mechanics is needed. And obviously, we didn't have that. We had the revolution of quantum mechanics started by Max Planck in 1900. And if you like, finished by Heisenberg, Schrödinger, and Dirac, and the spin discovery in the 1920s, but we didn't have a similar revolution of understanding of the nucleus. So this is an important question, I think underestimated, swept under the rug by contemporary physics, and I expect that, well, if we make progress, it could be that artificial intelligence helps us someday, and certainly it would be one of the yeah, proofs that artificial intelligence has become superhuman if it's capable to calculate that mysterious number. If you want to dig more deeply into the discussion about fundamental constants, what we need to discover and how physics somehow went astray in the past century, consider my books. I'm also happy to send you a PDF for free if you email me. I think it's very important for understanding fundamental physics to have a look at the history. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.